Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Being a collector is fun. You buy a lot of things based on something you enjoy and it gives you a cool looking display, but it also involves wasting a ton of money and then for the diehards, they just end up subscribing to things so they can get even more stuff. Oh man. Modern culture and media. What has the world come to? SpongeBob is a popular media franchise. It's been around since 1999 and has 13 seasons and 3 theatrical films. It's gained quite a fan base over the years and has resulted in Nickelodeon milking it to get every single possible last penny out of. This resulted in <laughs> spin-offs which people hate for one reason or another, but with everything happening these days, SpongeBob has also created its own subscription boxes. Surprise, surprise. Last time we took a look at the Bikini Bottom Box. I got that for Christmas after I showed it to my family. But unfortunately, I had no idea it was a subscription model. Yeah, I know. I'm an idiot. Even my relatives who got me that last box were surprised it was a subscription box. So we had to discuss canceling the subscription. I said it would be okay if they did that, and I will come back to this later. Let's talk about this new subscription box. This one is themed around Glove World. Glove World is one of the most popular locations in the show. It's an amusement park that's themed around gloves. It has rides and sells merchandise that are themed around gloves. The first episode where it appeared was episode 35, Rock Bottom, where it appeared at the very beginning right before Spongebob and Patrick got on the wrong bus. Ever since, it was never seen or mentioned again, but fans always remembered Glove World. It might have been because the episode itself was good, but I know that I always remembered Glove World. It wasn't shown again until season 5 in episode 167, Roller Cowards, when it was the focus of the episode when it gained a new ride, the Fiery Fisto Pain. This was also the first episode to be focused entirely around Glove World. It's also the focus of one of the biggest continuity errors in the show. In episode 330, Glove World R.I.P. from season 8, Glove World was shut down and a bigger version, Glove Universe, was opened. Starting with episode 411, Don't Wake Patrick, from season 10, it was shown again and made many appearances in season 12, and Glove Universe was nowhere to be seen. SpongeBob continuity, right? Something that never occurred to me as a kid was that Glove World is a parody of Disneyland. Now yes, there are a bunch of white gloves everywhere, which do look similar to Mickey Mouse gloves, but this theme park is also in Bikini Bottom. Anything can happen down in Bikini Bottom. I mean, hell, Spongebob's house is a pineapple. I'm sure it would be possible for the crew to make a water park themed around blankets. Need I say more? I didn't really think it was a parody of Disneyland until episode 507, Escape from Beneath Glove World, where there was this shot of three mice with Mickey Mouse ears, and when they revealed the creator of Glove World was named Hieronymus Glove, and showed that he was cryogenically frozen, which of course pokes fun at the conspiracy theory that Walt Disney, the creator of Disneyland, was also cryogenically frozen. Now that I've droned on about Glove World, let's take a look at the Glove World themed subscription box. But first, again, I'm not sponsored. Again, this was a result of the lack of me thinking about the possibility of this being a subscription box. The front of the box has a wide shot of Glove World, and on the right side, there is a glove balloon that says, Welcome to Glove World. On the top left, the stamp this time is of SpongeBob and Patrick wearing Glove World hats and vacation clothes. The sides are yellow, and this time the back is yellow. On the bottom, it has the same made in China and built by Culture Fly. The top and bottom sides are again blue and have the Spongebob logo on it. Opening it up, there's a card with Glove World on one side, and on the back, it shows everything that it comes with. Stop doing that! There's also a little booklet showing off some other Culturefly subscription boxes. The front cover has all the boxes they're promoting here. The first box advertised is for Pusheen, a cartoon cat that mostly appears in comic strips on platforms like Facebook. The next page shows other Nickelodeon themed subscription boxes. The box at the top half is themed around Clarissa Explains It All, and on the lower half it's showing the bikini bottom box that was already released. The next page shows off subscription boxes themed around other popular TV shows such as The Office, Friends, Supernatural, and Seinfeld. And I gotta say, these don't seem too bad. Like these Spongebob boxes, these seem like perfect gift ideas for fans of these shows. On the next page, we see boxes for kids by something called Culture Fly Jr., which is clearly a division of Culture Fly that is aimed towards kids. These boxes are LOL Surprise, Build a Bear, We Wear Cute, and JoJo Siwa for some reason. Are you kidding me? 
Listen, I get it. I know these are meant for kids, and I'm not the target demographic. LOL Surprise and We Were Cute, to me, seem like they're meant for little girls. Build-A-Bear feels like it could be for kids in general, because I actually built a couple bears at Build-A-Bear when I was young. But if there's an entire subscription box themed completely around one specific celebrity, what has this world come to? Unless it's something like a music CD or album, I don't get why they make products like this around celebrities or <coughs> Moving on, the next page shows a box themed around something called Nathan W. Pyle Strange Planet. Strange Planet is a webcomic launched in February 2019 and Nathan W. Pyle was the creator. The next page is advertising superhero themed subscription boxes like My Hero Academia and Justice League America. On the back, there's a new box themed around Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cap Noir, a French CGI superhero series focused around two teenagers who transform into superheroes. Now that I've gone through this entire booklet, let's actually get into what's in this box. Okay, so first up we got a plush toy of Glovey Glove, the mascot of Glove World. Which is cool since that mascot was shown in Roller Cowards. Next up we got a Glove World staff jacket. So if you want to feel like you work at your favorite Bikini Bottom amusement park, you can do that. On the back it also shows pictures of some of the rides at Glove World, as well as showing a wide shot of Glove Universe at the bottom for some reason. And I can happily confirm, it fits. We also have a final figure of Patrick wearing Glove World merchandise. This also kind of makes me think of Patrick from episode 280, the abrasive side, where this figure looks sort of similar to Patrick when he was wearing similar clothes. Aside from a few color differences, it makes me think of that episode. I'm nothing without my random and out of nowhere Spongebob comparison. Regardless, it's another vinyl figure, meaning I can add it to my Spongebob vinyl figures collection, bringing the total to two. We also got a pair of Glove World socks, which is kind of cute. A friend of mine gave me a couple pairs of Spongebob socks as a gift one time, so I could possibly wear these one day. The next item is a fridge magnet set. One magnet has Spongebob and Patrick riding the fiery fist of pain with Spongebob happy and Patrick terrified and it says, Look Ma, no hands on it. The other magnet has the warning that the same ride may cause crying, screaming, projectile vomiting, amnesia, spine loss, embarrassing accidents, uncontrollable gas, and explosive diarrhea. I like this magnet better than the other one because this one precisely says the exact same thing as the actual sign from the same episode this is based on. Moving on, we got a Fiery Fist pain picture frame, which looks pretty nice, and the placeholder picture is the same as the magnet of Spongebob and Patrick on the aforementioned roller coaster. The final item is a spinning keychain. Taking it out of the package, it does indeed spin. And that is the entire Glove World box. I will say, I do like a lot of the items here. Things like the jacket, picture frame, and magnets are pretty cute. The socks are nice too, and I do like how the keychain spins. However, the Patrick Star Vinyl and Glovey Glove Plush are your standard useless trinkets included in every subscription box imaginable. Although I do like the Glovey Glove Plush because it's dead on with the actual Glovey Glove. This magnet is one of my favorite things in this box because of the attention to detail and how it looks like a pocket sized recreation of that same warning sign. Well, that's all I have to say about this box in particular, but I still have some time so let's compare this box to the Bikini Bottom Box. Starting off, the Bikini Bottom Box is slightly taller, but the Glove World Box is slightly longer. Both designs on the back are pretty nice. I do like the yellow design on the back of the Glove World Box, but it doesn't really say Glove World to me. The blue design on the back of the Bikini Bottom Box better represents what this box is all about in my opinion. Of course, the sky is shown everywhere underwater, but it still works to me. Glove World is also a part of Bikini Bottom, but the gloves are more white. They're not yellow by any means. Comparing the items themselves, I love how some of them pay attention to detail. Some of them have great references to the show, which is a nice source of fan service to fans of the series. Some of these look just like the items from the show that they're based on, which I really like. Of course, both of them have a vinyl figure, and I have no idea what the hell to do with them. However, I like the Patrick figure better because the design still looks somewhat similar to something from an actual episode. There isn't really any episode that the traveling Spongebob figure directly references, so point to Patrick. Again, some items I can get use of in some way, but others I can't really use other than doing this. As neat as many of these items are, 
that's just about it on what I have to say about them. As much as I like these items, I still don't think I'm going to keep collecting them from these boxes. I thought about it and I told my family they can cancel the Spongebob subscription box. I am not a hardcore collector by any means. I collect what I want and or what I can get some use out of. As much as some people like Spongebob, I don't think there's a single person out there who owns every single Spongebob related item ever made. I have the Spongebob items that I feel I need and I proved that I'm Spongebob's biggest fan because I know every single episode by name, number, and plot and I love every episode even the bad ones. And if I'm being honest, I think it would be nice to not have to worry about more of these boxes. It just means more clutter and less space. What the? Hmm, maybe they didn't cancel it in time. And oh boy, it's my favorite kind of box too, the to be continued box.